Why is it extremely likely that you, just like me, own more games than we have time to play? Why is it that there are probably games on our shelves that we have never booted up? Or maybe games that we bought digitally that have never been launched? Or even if we have touched and launched every single game that we own, many of those games we might not have spent more than a few minutes playing. Now, obviously, there this is beyond buyer's remorse, right? You always have that happen where you bought a game, you played it a little bit, you didn't enjoy it, so you stopped playing it. That's a completely separate thing, valid, whatever. It's just that's just like buying movies. That's just like you know watching a TV show. You watch an episode, you don't like it, you don't watch anymore. Okay, like that's obviously the most obvious you know thing in the world. You bought it, you tried it, you don't like it. Okay, but that's not what we're really talking about, right? I, as an example, bought Starlink Battle for Atlas. I bought Octopath Traveler. I love those games a lot. When I do play them, I really enjoy them. But why don't I play them more often? Why am I constantly going back to games like Fortnite? Why am I constantly going back to Breath of the Wild or NBA? Why am I choosing to play all these other games instead of playing games that I own that I have yet to complete? Playing games that I know I enjoy playing, but I never feel a desire to actually play. Why is it that we own way more games than any of us realistically have time to play? Especially in an era of gaming when there are so many games that are kind of like Fortnite, where they're perpetual. They don't end. So why do we keep adding more and more to our library instead of just finishing what we have before moving on to what's next? There's an interesting article actually on this uh, about five years ago on Kotaku of all places by Ethan Levy I want to go over. And this deals more with Steam, but it kind of gets into some of the psyche behind some of this stuff. So first, let's take a look at that article. So it says, we're buying more PC games than we can play. Let's just go through the article a bit here. It says, as another Steam holiday sale comes to a close, I spent roughly $100 to purchase 22 games. In the past two months, I have picked up three Humble Bundles. Not a month ago, I spent around $50 on 11 games in the Steam Fall Sale. By the time the next Steam Sale rolls around, I will be lucky if I have played half of those games. I have a problem. I am a compulsive collector. And after 1,400 gamers took my recent survey on their game buying habits, I know that I'm not alone. And then let's look at his, his statistics here. So he asked 1,400 gamers about their game buying habits. 79% of those gamers enjoy the feeling of getting a good deal. So sales play a role in this. I think this plays a role in anything. A lot of us will go to Walmart, we'll go to Kohl's as an example, operates on that, where we'll buy a bunch of things we really don't need just because they're on sale. Um, so that is obviously uh, a driving motiv motivator where there's this, there's this thing in there where we think we're getting a good deal on something, even if we're never going to play it, we end up buying it. If uh, that piece of clothing, I see that at one point I kind of want it, but now it's 50% off, I'm, I'm going to buy it, even if I never end up wearing it. I have clothes in my wardrobe I've never put on because of compulsive purchasing like this. So that's obviously a factor here. And then said so the average gamer bought 60% of their games on sale. I think uh, obviously this might deal more with PC, but I think this is true even in general. I know a lot of us do pick up games at launch, but some of us do wait for sales. Uh, some of you guys might, you know, might be purchasing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate or something right now on Amazon, which it's now $4 off from when it was at launch. That would be a sale. It's a small one, but it's still a sale. Uh, next it says, the average gamer purchased between 11 and 25 games in the last 12 months, and they have not played 40% of those games. So I looked back on my library, uh, and I don't know that there's a, any game I haven't played, but there are some games I haven't even played for an hour. Full admittance, there are games in my library over the past year that I have not put in more than an hour. So why why is that i don't tend to buy games i think are bad what what's going on so 30 percent of gamers have 50 plus games in the pile of shame which is basically we haven't played these games yet on uh, the average gamer buys just 20 percent of games at full price all right and that's how we just compile all the statistics he says my pile of shame is daunting nearly 200 unplayed games on steam over 50 box games across six consoles and three handholds 50 classics on good old games, a constantly growing library of digital games thanks to PlayStation Plus. In my fantasy world, I intend on playing all of these games in that mythical someday.
It's okay, I tell myself. When I buy Papa Yo along with six other indie games for under $5 each, it's because I want to show my support. Look at that. I want to show my support. Interesting. Fully knowing I will not have time to play these games for months. With each newly acquired Humble Bundle, I remind myself that I am not doing this just for the games, but to support charity at the same time as the developer. As I impulse buy another AAA game that has just dropped to the $5 mark, I intone, the price is too good to pass up. These quotes, which echo my personal justifications, come from comments left by some of the 1,400 gamers who took the survey. I love buying games at a discount. Building a collection has overtaken playing as my hobby. So what I get out of this data that he collected, and granted, this is five-year-old data. Obviously, you know, we, I can conduct some of my own surveys here and maybe come to a better conclusion in the future. I don't know that the data he has there is really any different than today, though. Um, it doesn't explain why we buy games, but it does explain um, that it is a common occurrence, that so many of us buy games we don't have time to play. And I do think there is that thing in our mind where if we buy a game at full price, we are more likely to play it at least. Whether it's to completion or not, I don't know. But we are more likely to play it. Every game I bought for the full $60 price tag on Switch, I have put at least 10 hours in. I actually just went over this through a live stream the other day when someone tried to call me out and say that I don't play the games I buy. Uh, and you know, and they and they define that as playing playing the games for at least ten hours. Well, every sixty dollar purchased game I played, I've played for more than ten hours. It, it turns out Switch backed me up on that. So, uh, but there are games that I bought on sale that I haven't. Uh, Civilization VI got that on sale, got it used, have, have hardly even touched it. Uh, there's other games out there, especially indie titles, where maybe I bought them at full price, but they were so cheap I don't really like feel like I need to play it, right? Like, they're kind of put on the back burner, like, oh, as a, I'll play this eventually kind of purchase. And then that eventuality never actually manifests. I honestly think that as a community, I don't know if this is a problem. I think this is consumerism. I think this is impulse buying. There's obviously collectors out there that care more about the act of collecting games than playing games. But I, I don't think it's just a, even a collector's mentality. I think there is a large chunk of gamers that love the conversation around games more than they actually enjoy playing games. I bet there are some people watching this video right now that enjoy watching my content more than they enjoy playing games. And that's interesting because my content exists because of video games. But some people enjoy that community, they enjoy the conversation, they enjoy the debate, they enjoy the industry, and they enjoy the excitement around games more than they might actually enjoy playing them. And I think that is really uh, a component of if you bought a $60 game at launch and you still haven't played it, it chances are you are one of those people. I'm just venturing the guess that you are one of those people that if you bought a $60 game and you didn't play it or you've hardly touched it, chances are you are that person. You are that person that cares way more about the hype around games, the conversation around games, the community around games, than about actually playing them. I, I think this is really interesting data to look at, and I'll link to the Kotaku article down below if you want to dive through more developer stuff. I didn't want to read everything you wrote, but I honestly think that this is a conversation that we should have, because I want to know your guys' thoughts on why you, like if you are a person who has a back catalog of games that you just know, like you might keep telling yourself you're going to get to them, but it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Why do you keep buying new games instead of finishing what you have first? Why, what part of our brain is telling us, hey, look, you know what? I have a whole bunch of new games to play that I haven't touched yet that are on my Switch right now, that are on my Xbox, that are on my PC. Why do I need to buy this new thing right now? Why don't I go finish those things, then buy this new thing? And heck, by the time you get to that new thing, it could even be cheaper. So I don't know why, I think is the conclusion I have here. I, I do know that there's consumerism tricks involved from sales. Uh, I do know that there's impulse buys. I do know that uh, there's an endorphin release sometimes when we buy something brand new and we get excited around it. How many of you guys like going to, you know, buy physical games and buy uh, consoles in person instead of online because you enjoy the rush of midnight launches and all that, like the excitement and the buzz around it more than the act of playing it? I know that I felt that way. I've been more excited at times when I purchased and picked up a game and talked about the game than I was I don't know, a few days later after playing it. And that, to me, you could talk about games being overhyped, I suppose, but I don't even think that's it. 
Because none of the games I play, I felt like I was lied to in the hype cycle, for the most part. I mean, obviously there's exceptions out there. Fallout 76, anyone? But I do think there's a part of us that doesn't comprehend how little time we have to play. And maybe it's because we throw ourselves back to when we were kids. When we were kids, even if you were in sports, even if you were an, an ace student and whatever, a lot of us found a way to have a ton of free time to play video games, especially in the summer. And we just play what we had. Sometimes we get new games, we play the heck out of that. And I think as adults, we feel like we're going to have that time again. Because, hey, all we do is work. How hard is it to work and find time? There's a lot of other responsibilities as an adult besides work that you didn't worry about as a kid. As a kid, it's like, oh, I got practice, I got games, I got music, I got concerts. Oh, and hey, look, I got schoolwork. But that was it. Maybe a job once you were 15, 16. But, like, that's it. Like, after you were done, you weren't thinking, how am I paying my rent this month? How am I going to be able to afford my, my health insurance, let alone the insurance on my new car? Oh, I need to go get this fixed on this thing. Oh, a uh, pipe burst in my house. Oh, I have children now. Like, There's all these things you don't think about or worry about when you're a kid that lends to you having maybe more disposable income and potentially the free time to play as many games as you want. That, I think, plays a role. But is that it? Because some of you guys are young in college and in high school watching, and you have that free time, and you still buy the games, and you still don't play them. So I'm actually curious. What are your thoughts on this? Why do you think that gamers on the whole buy more games than we actually have time to play? Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Ruffledgeants from Nintendo Prime. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Be sure to uh, enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate giveaway through the Gleam.io link. I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in, and I will catch you in the next video.